We've been using Microsoft Excel as a quasi database on our own computer to help beef up our WordPress web pages without having to indulge in languages such as PHP and SQL. In previous videos, we stripped Excel tables and converted them into various text files, called them up by drop down menus or text search boxes, and using our WordPress server pages, built them into returning browser pages. This time we'll go full circle and see how we can automate the construction of one of those tables using Excel's query table functions to download information from the web and into our worksheet. A query table is an extremely powerful tool which can access any network or online data construct such as a database or a web page. In this case we'll use Wikipedia pages to provide data for the table of five Yorkshire universities we used in a previous video. Sheet 2 has the table we've already used. What we're going to do is automate the process of populating the first five columns. That's the university name and web address, student numbers, the vice chancellor and the first paragraph of each university's Wikipedia entry. We could do much more, but we want to keep it simple. And just to check what we're doing, we'll enter our web query data below our existing table data. So in our Visual Basic Editor module, here's our subroutine headed web query. By the way, you'll need to look at earlier videos to see how we set up the editor and the module. As usual, we've tried to keep the coding as simple as possible. Our variables are pretty much the same, integers for a for next loop and numerical row values. Two strings for our Wikipedia URL and Wikipedia text and a selection of string variables to pick up individual bits of data. The only information we need for this to work is the university name, but it must be the formal name Wikipedia recognises. One thing we must try to do is to make sure errors are dealt with. As you'll see in a minute, we're going to look through our Wikipedia file for certain keywords, but suppose one doesn't exist. Normally this event would bring everything to an undignified halt. Visual Basic's on error resume next, however, allows us to drop down to the next line of our code without complaint. Now we set up the for next loop to drop down through the five rows of our table, picking up a university name each time round. We then create a connection URL for our query table. Notice how this is made up with URL in capitals at the beginning of the string, followed unusually for Visual Basic by a semicolon followed by the main body of the Wikipedia URL and the university name. Now we move to another worksheet we've inserted called Dropsheet, which is where we're going to import each university's Wikipedia page. First thing we'll do is clear out any old stuff out of it. Next we come to a relatively complicated bit of code. We're saying set up a query table on our current worksheet starting at cell A1 and connect to the Wikipedia page using the URL we've just created. And we need to set up some properties. There are actually many we could set up, but since we're only accessing a web page, for simplicity's sake, we'll cut them down to five. As the name suggests, query tables were originally created to access data tables, but these are increasingly rare in HTML these days, so we'll have to import the entire page and search through that. We want our page as text and not HTML, so we set up no web formatting. We may want dates at some point, so we'll accept those. And we don't want the query to refresh itself or work in the background, so we set those to zero and false. And that's it. Now when we run the code, if we have an online connection, it should take a second or two to download each page into Dropsheet. And this is what it looks like for the University of Leeds over 1200 rows of text. So we can start searching for our data. And for that we use the visual basic cells find method. Again we've cut the properties down to basics. If we look at them the first one is obvious. What are we looking for? In this case the string vice chancellor. Look at whole means we want a cell with only vice chancellor in it and not as part of a sentence. And in case there is a variety of formats, we'll not match upper and lower cases. If we can't find anything, our on error trap will let us carry on to the next line without a fuss. 
If successful, the find method lands on the cell which holds the search term. And if we look at that entry in drop sheet, we see the vice chancellor's name is in the adjoining cell. We can now get VB to transfer that value to our variable string VC by using the offset property from the active cell we're in. This is another new thing, so let's examine it. The first value is a row offset. Plus one would mean one row down, and minus one would mean one row up. In our case, we need to stay on the same row, so we have zero. The second value is the column offset. We need to be one column to the right, so that's one. Now we follow the same process for student numbers and the university web address. There's a slight difference with student numbers. We want a string and the entry could be an integer. And as Visual Basic doesn't like clashes of data types, we'll use the convert string function to convert the number into a string. But now we have a bit of a problem. We want to pick up the first paragraph, but there's no title or header to guide us. So we'll need to build our own little find function. The only real thing we've got to go on is that a paragraph will probably have lots of characters in it. So how about we go down the rows looking for the first cell with lots of characters? Here we'll use the do until loop and the offset property again to go down the rows checking cell values. We we'll set the row counter to zero and head off into our loop, which only has one thing to do to increase the counter. And then the loop conditional checks to see if the next offset cell has more than 50 characters in it. If it hasn't, it goes round the loop again until it finds one that does. And then adds the contents of that cell to our Wikipedia text string. And just in case we can't find a cell with over 50 characters at all, you'll notice we terminate the loop at row 1000. And now we simply go back to sheet 2 and print out the results in the appropriate cells. And here's the routine in action. As you can see, we've assigned the routine to a simple button and we've stopped the screen updating so it works smoothly and more quickly. At the end, a message pops up saying it took around 7 seconds to download, convert to text, search and transfer data to our worksheet from 5 Wikipedia pages and each page over 300k in HTML and text alone. It means 100 pages would take 2 to 3 minutes to process. And 300k per page is quite hefty. If you wanted share price quotes from Yahoo, for instance, their pages would be a quarter of the size and a lot quicker to process. We've used the query tables quite crudely here, just setting them up one at a time and then deleting them. Instead, we could set up many query tables and get them to refresh themselves every few minutes if we wanted to keep track of a lot of volatile data. Share prices come to mind again. In that case, if we delete the cell's clear contents here and change our refresh period value to 15 here, Excel will automatically store all our query tables in Dropsheet and update them every 15 minutes. All we need to do now is create text files from the data as we've already done elsewhere. We can even do this automatically using Visual Basics on time method and upload the results to our WordPress server again automatically if we have an FTP client with an upload scheduler, which we have hidden away in Windows and which Excel can access as we'll see in our next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching.